All right, breaking night now. We are awaiting the House vote on the GOP health care bill. If it passes, this new legislation will replace a failing Obamacare system that over the years has caused premiums to rise and care quality to diminish. And if the GOP can follow through with its promise to repeal and replace, the new bill will have a major impact on all of our lives, including America's doctors and their patients. Joining me now is Family and Emergency Medicine Director, Dr. Jeanette Neshwat. Doctor, so let me ask you first your, your biggest thought here. What are you hearing from patients and what's your biggest fear about what you're seeing today? Well, first of all, as a primary care and emergency medicine doctor, I got to tell you, I see firsthand how vital it is and how important it is and how meaningful it is for patients and families and individuals to have meaningful, affordable health care. No one in this country should be denied medical care because they can't afford it. And do no they have one, it now in your opinion? Or no? Some do, some don't. And no one should be forced to go into a financial ruin or bankruptcy because of medical Care. So is that so? Do you think that what they're proposing now today is going to change that, or it fix might? That? You know what? Finally, the day has come to rescue and salvage us from this imploding healthcare system, and I, I do hope that the bill passes because the current system is broken and it needs to be fixed and replaced with a plan that effectuates a purpose predicated on the idea of a patient-centered healthcare system. Do you think so. that, that you know, one of the things that we're not seeing right away yeah. that was one of President Trump's biggest promises, interstate competition for insurance yeah. companies, tort reform, things that yeah. were debated ad nauseum in 2008, yeah. delayed but not forgotten, yeah. let's put it that way, on this bill. And those, yeah, does those that are, count, in your opinion, as it does. It matters? It or? does. It matters. It counts. It is very important. And we have to look at what the current system is now and compare it to what they are proposing. Right now, I can't tell you the negative impact the current system has on my patients. It's literally, Cheryl, it's literally life-changing for some of my patients because some of my patients are delaying seeking medical care. I had a patient the other day, 55-year-old man. He came in with chest pain. For a few days, he's been having chest pain. And I said, why did you wait a few days? Why didn't you call 911? Why didn't you go to the ER? And the reason is he had a five or $6,000 deductible. And it was more important for him to feed and house his children and take care of his family and pay their mortgage and buy groceries than to pay five. Was he under one of the exchange? Was he under yeah. the exchange? Yeah, he was, he's and that's run. very heartbreaking to me. That, in addition to the delay in seeking medical care, you know, patients are losing their doctors because doctors are no longer, you know, in their network. So they lose access to their doctors, and that directly, you know, harms the patient-doctor relationship. What do you make of this this argument? The Freedom Caucus brought this up and kind of to light last night about the ten essential levels of health care. We heard Sean Spicer say yesterday, you know, a forty or fifty year old man does not need maternity care. Uh, that was in there that's now been pushed down to the states. What do you, do you agree it, or disagree it, with that exactly. decision? You know what? It's not a one size fits all. And that's exactly right. You know, I was just speaking to a, a young all mom. A card health yeah. Care yeah. It, it should be customized to your needs. I was just speaking to a young mom the other day. She has three children. She has a five year old little boy. Her five year old doesn't shouldn't be paying the same amount in health care costs as his 36 year old mom. He needs routine vaccines. His mom needs routine pap smears. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, medicine should be geared towards the needs of the patient. What are do the doctors that are in your group that are at your clinic? Mm -hmm. Around the country, and I've actually mm -hmm. I've been to one of your clinics, uh, and they're great. Uh, what do they say? How do they feel? And just in general, is it, is it a yes or a no with doctors right now? So it, it, there's kind of a mixed feeling, just as we're seeing here right now in the House of Represent Representatives. Um, but you know, and, and not everyone has Obamacare. Some people have you know private uh, health care insurance, um, and some people already have insurance from out of state. And that's why we do need to see these proposed changes of you know the markets being able to uh, obtain a health care insurance across state lines. But the other thing people are forgetting, you're going to be able to stay on your parents' insurance plan up until 26. You're going to have pre-existing conditions which are covered. You're going to be able to put more money into a health savings account. You're going to get tax credits. There's a lot of good that's about to come. President Trump is yeah. the one that put his foot down into do not touch pre-existing conditions, yeah. I should say. Yeah. All right, doctor, thank you very much. Yes.